Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. So we will begin with the session today. I welcome you all again for the session. To introduce myself, I'm Rishikesh, and I have around 16 years of experience in working in the IT industry now uh, on various big data and big data analytics related projects, both in in-premise as well as in the cloud platforms. In today's session, we will be talking about the big data analytics and its application in BI. So I'll try to share some very important aspects of this vast concept in this session. Let's, let me just uh, walk you through the agenda. We will be starting with knowing what big data is, big data as an opportunity, what is big data analytics, types of big data analytics, big data analytics tools that we can use. Now, um, we will be trying to share or discuss some of the important tools, but then Apart from these tools also, there are many other tools because the big data world is quite dynamic. Every couple of months, you have a new tool coming up. How does big data analytics works? What are the different stages in the big data analytics? And finally, we will end the session by understanding or reviewing different big data analytics applications. Where, what are the, uh, where is it applied? In what all industries is it applied? Okay, so let's talk about what big data is. Now there is a dictionary different, uh, definition of big data. The big data is the term for collection of data sets so large and complex that it is difficult to process using on-hand database system tools or traditional data processing applications. So definitely from this definition, we understand that this is some data which is definitely not storable or processable by our legacy systems, like we had um, RDBMS systems. So you can consider big data as a high volume, high velocity, high variety information assets that demand cost-effective innovative forms of information processing that enable enhance, enhanced insight, decision-making and process automation, okay? So even if the term big data might give you an impression that if the data volume is huge, we will call that data big data, no. There are five distinct properties of every data that require to categorize that data, that are required to categorize that data as big data, namely volume, velocity, variety, veracity, and value. Volume is of course the size of the data. Then we have the velocity. All of this big data is getting generated with tremendous velocity every microsecond of the day. This data is in the various formats, audios, videos, everything. It is in the different file formats and veracity. As this data is getting generated from various sources, it is bound to have some kind of noise in it, some kind of, uh, you can say, distractions or some kind of um, impurities in it. And then, despite of all of these challenges, this big data has a tremendous value hidden, it, hidden in it. So our capacity to deploy proper big data analytics tools on top of this data and derive value. So volume, velocity, variety, veracity, and value. These are the five Bs of big data. Okay. So now having talked about big data, now let us try and understand what kind of opportunities does this very valuable big data hold. Okay. Now we need to apply all of these tech on, on uh, different techniques and get it work for us. So the opportunities that we have are the next generation products, cost reduction, faster and better decision making, improved services or products. Let's have a look at the examples and what each one of these opportunities mean for us. So new generation products with the ability to gauge customer needs and satisfaction through analytics comes the power to give customers what they want before even they want or before even they know what they want we are presenting things to them right so google self-driving car then you have many other uh, intelligent applications these days um, then we have uh, the otp platforms correct netflix and all of that what is the reason or what is the secret behind the success of these otp platforms these days because they understand by analyzing the customer data the viewing habits of their customers, and then they exactly present what their customer wants. Customers wants. Now, one of the examples that I want to share here is very, which is very, um, very interesting. Some of you might be already using it also, and that is your smart yoga mat. 
Now, smart yoga mat has some, um, uh, you know, AI driven uh, facilities involved. In it. it has various sensors on it. And when you start using yoga mat, smart yoga mat, it actually through this various, various calibration steps, understand your body posture, where you're lacking, when you're going out of balance on while doing postures on the yoga mat. And then capturing that, it sends it to a database from there that data is analyzed for you and it gives you certain recommendation of how you should be maintaining your posture to get the maximum benefit from whatever yoga poses or whatever you're doing on that mat. So it's a smart yoga mat. Also, uh, we have various applications on e-commerce sites and those kind of things. We must have we must have shopped on Amazon and those kind of sites. Why these sites have, why these e-commerce portals have become so successful these days is because they are able to analyze the big data generated by their customers and analyzing it, right? Then next we have is cost reduction. Cost reduction is the and because of the data technologies and technical advancements like cloud computing bring significant cost advantages when it comes to store and process the big data, right? So the evolution of these various big data storage and analytical tools, they have actually bring about where uh, all of these things available to us, they have brought all of these things um, to us at a very minimal cost. You know, many of the applications that we use on mobiles are actually doing big data analytics for us without we even realizing it. So it has become that cost effective. Then we have faster and better decision making. Big data analytics provides ways to analyze the data and make quick decisions. That's what the important use case of big data is, making big decisions, making quick decisions used on, uh, used on the analysis. The New York Police Department, NYPD uses this um, for curbing the crime rate, okay? Now, NY, uh, NYPD brilliantly uses the big data analytics to detect and identify crimes before they occur. How? They analyze historical arrest patterns and then maps them with events such as federal holidays, pay days, traffic flows, rainfalls, etc. And this aids them in analyzing the information immediately by utilizing these data patterns. Right? From that, they understand that if certain, um, certain of these um, you know, events are occurring in any part of New York, then there is high probability of crimes happening based on the past data. So they deploy their forces in that area and the crime is not allowed to happen. That's, this is how they are using big data analytics for curbing crime rates in their area. Then we have improved services or products. Most organizations uh, use behavioral analytics of customers in order to provide customer satisfaction and hence increase their customer base. Now, you, if you have gone to a physical, uh, you say a shopping mall, there you will see certain items are placed out of their aisle, right? We have electronics gadgets and in there, if we have washing machine, then we also will find certain washing powder brands or something like that placed close by, even though that is not the area for placing them, but they are kept there anyways, because those shopping mall management has identified the pattern the customers follow while buying these kind of items, right? From where have they understood this pattern? from their billing information. Whenever they find somebody buying a washing machine, most of the times these customers also buy these kind of accessories. So they are making these things available next to these items, right? They are not even allowing you to walk certain steps and go to a proper department. And then maybe while walking, you might change your mind. So they just want to hack it without you even realizing it, right? And that works best for their businesses. This is not only for the washing machines and washing powders, but then many other let's say breakfast items, you might want to buy eggs and then eggs um, might lead to buy milk and then bread brands and something like that. So all of these patterns they have identified and accordingly they place items, make offers to you so that it increases their business, right? So this is what the opportunity that big data and its proper or timely analytics provides us. So what is big data analytics now? Let's try and understand the uh, definition. The big data is a technique. Big data analytics is a technique used to extract, extract the insight which are meaningful, such as customer experiences of a store or a product, hidden patterns, trends in the market, and unknown correlations, right? Now, when we say data, data is nothing, uh, nothing but a pile of maybe numerals or characters or some symbols. As such, that data has no value. 
But when you crunch that data, you find certain patterns in that data, you get some value out of it. So let us now formally define what is big data analytics. Big data analytics examines large and different types of data to uncover hidden patterns from it, correlations and other insights. Basically, big data analytics is largely used by companies to facilitate their growth and development. How? Because they are analyzing the data of their customers and making utilization of the information that they get from that data analytics. So this majorly involves applying various data mining algorithms on the given set of data, which will then aid the business owner take better decisions. Maybe get some good offers for their customers during certain seasons of the year and stuff like that. Okay, so that is what your big data analytics is. Now let's go further and have a look at the types of big data analytics. Now this is very important. There are, no matter what kind of a data, no matter, no matter what kind of a domain it is, there are four main types of big data analytics. That is your prescriptive analytics, descriptive analytics, diagnostic analysis, analytics, and predictive analytics. Right now, the terms which are used here are quite self explanatory. Okay, so now let's have a look at each one of these analytics types here. Prescriptive analysis, as it's, as its name suggests, it uses optimization and simulation algorithm to advise on possible outcomes and answers. So what should we do? They prescribe, right? You must have heard doctors prescribing certain medicines to their patients. So here the prescriptive analysis is a method in which we analyze the data and then based on the data analysis, we find certain patterns based on those patterns we prescribe to our customer that what should they do? It allows users to prescribe a number of different possible actions and guide them towards a solution. In a nutshell, this analytics is all about providing advice, prescribing something to your customers, right? So the next type of analytics that we have here is your descriptive analytics. Again, as the name suggests, this is describing something. Okay, this is about describing something. So it uses data aggregation and data mining to provide insight into the past and answer what has happened. It is just about describing what has happened. It is not predicting you, it is not giving you any solution. It is just describing what is happening. The descriptive analytics does exactly what the name implies. They describe or summarize raw data and make it interpretable by humans or the businesses or the stakeholders, decision makers in the businesses. So that's all about the descriptive analytics. The next type of analytics that we have here is diagnostic analytics. So diagnostic analysis analytics is a type wherein you are diagnosing certain things. It is used to determine why something happened in the past, right? It is characterized by techniques such as drill down, drilling down the data, data discovery, applying some data mining techniques on that, applying some, applying some machine learning algorithms on top of that. Diagnostic analytics takes a deeper look at the data to understand the root causes of the events. This analytics is basically aimed at diagnostics, diagnosing what has happened, what is the root cause of, root cause of this problem and all of those things. Data aggregation, data mining. Data mining can be a part of descriptive and uh, the first one that we saw, the prescriptive. Diagnostic is more into, yes, you can say data aggregation. Uh, it is more into uh, diagnostic. If it is getting you to the root of the problem, then that definitely is a diagnostic uh, analysis, analytics me mechanism. And the last one in this category we have is your predictive analytics. As the name suggests, this is again focused at predicting certain things. So we have the machine learning algorithms and data science algorithms. Now, many of us are actually using these kind of, uh, uh, these kind of scenarios in our app, mobile phones also. Correct. Um, the very um, many smart camera applications that we have on the mobile phones nowadays, right? If you focus it, then it has some um, intelligence built into it. Okay. It so most of those applications have many of these predictive analytics, uh, many of these uh, analytics mechanisms inbuilt in it, 
right? It predicts based on your face structure, it predicts where your eye will be, where your nose will be, where your lips are going to be. And when you apply certain filters, then maybe it will make your uh, lips uh, appear um, suppler, more supple, or maybe your eyes appear wider or bigger, your complexion slightly fairer, right? So those kind of things are so, um, you know, inbuilt in many of these applications that we use nowadays that we are using them without even realizing that we are using such high end technologies available to us in our mobile phones. Correct. So diagnostic analytics is used to determine why something happened in the, uh, sorry, not diagnostic. We are talking about predictive. So predictive analytics is uses statistical models and forecast techniques to understand the future and answer what could happen or what will happen. Right. If it is about the business, then based on the historical data of the business, the growth trends, the marketing strategies and those kind of things, it will analyze that. And then it will predict whether it's good or bad, whether you follow the same steps. If you do not change your behavior, certain behaviors while running your businesses, then what can happen in the future? It might be good or bad. So it is, again, uh, you know, the way of understanding your business. So when you put all of these different techniques together, the prescriptive, the de descriptive, predictive and diagnostic analysis, it gives you a complete 360 view of your business, what actions should be taken, right? What should be done to avoid certain things? What is causing certain things? What is the reason of certain things? And what is going on? Correct? So that's the, those are the different types of uh, big data analytics we have here. Now, when we say these are just concepts, to apply these big data analytics, you have different kinds of packages available in different programming languages, such as Python and those kind of things are a lot of uh, analytics work using those packages and uh, in those languages, you have various machine learning algorithms, data science algorithms, statistical algorithms, and those kind of things. Correct. But then those, all of those programs can be actually categorized in these four categories of big data analytics that is prescriptive, descriptive, diagnostic, and predictive. Okay. So now, which are the different um, big data analytics tools which are allowing us to do this? So now let's have a look at the big data analytics tools. Now, this is called a stack of big data analytics tools, or you sometimes call it as an ecosystem also, big data ecosystem, right? Now, the very first tool that we have in this category is big data or Apache Hadoop. Now, whenever we say big data or whenever we say Hadoop, we always say big data because Hadoop is the pioneering technology in big data. Late in, in late 1990s and early 2000s, uh, many companies like Google and Facebook and Yahoo, they were facing big data challenges and they very soon realized that their legacy RDBMS systems are no match for storing this data and processing this data, correct? So they were looking for various technologies uh, or various solutions so Google came up with a solution called GFS, Google File System. Based on that, Duck Cutting and Mike Caffarella created something called HDFS. HDFS is a storage mechanism. When you pair it with processing mechanism that is MapReduce, we get Hadoop. So when we say Hadoop, it is actually a complete big data solution, which has HDFS for the storing of data and MapReduce for processing that data. Now Hadoop is a very, as I said, very pioneering technology. It is still used, but back then that was the only technology okay the technology big data technology world was emerging at that time as the time evolved as big data matured as the technology matured now we have various other technologies also here and it is a very dynamic world we have as i mentioned right in the beginning every couple of months we have new technology and all of these technologies allow us to do storage of big data and then analyze that big data. And that's why you see all of these different businesses and social networks like Facebook and Google and uh, Amazon, they are becoming stronger and stronger because applying and deploying all of these uh, newest technologies, they are able to process, analyze their, their customer data even better and become stronger and stronger as a business. So the first one is Hadoop. Then we have uh, the real-time processing engine that is Spark. Then we have some NoSQL databases such as Cassandra. We have Storm, which allows again uh, to do the real-time big, big data processing. Then we have Elasticsearch. If you want to do some kind of data mining and that kind of analysis, then you use Elasticsearch. Then we have Talent. Talent is basically an ETL tool 
uh, and also it allows you to transform the data in certain formats uh, and it is made for big data. So let's have a look at each one of these technologies now. Apache Hadoop. Hadoop does not do any analytics. When I say Hadoop does not do any analytics, it is mainly used for big data storage. Earlier, it had a processing uh, framework called MapReduce. It, it, it even has it now. But as the with the evolution of big data technologies, we have much stronger technologies. Is HDFS full form? Sir, HDFS is full form. Okay, HDFS is Hadoop distributed file system. Okay. So Hadoop distributed file system in Hadoop will store the data and then MapReduce will process this data. But as the technology has evolved, now we have faster and faster big data processing technologies. And that's why MapReduce is not that much used. Okay, it is used, but very rarely because Spark is doing everything that uh, you know your MapReduce can do and it is also doing in memory data processing. And that's why nowadays Hadoop is mainly used for storing the data, big data, and then we can deploy various processing techniques on top of Hadoop, which allow us to process that data in parallel and distributed fashion. Okay. Now, um, uh, Hadoop is a complete storage system, but we need to get the data into Hadoop systems, HDFS systems. So talent is a big data. Um, talent for big data is a built on top of talent's data integration solution. So talent is actually an ETL tool, data integration tool. It takes data from various sources, processes it, transforms it, and then loads it into your big data solutions, such as your Hadoop or Spark or whatever NoSQL databases. So it is an open source software and provides an easy to use graphical development environment. When you uh, integrate talent with big data, it has a wonderful graphical interface and it has a it takes care of all the heavy lifting. Even if you don't know big data technologies like Hadoop, and Pig and Hive and Kafka using talent, using GUI, you can actually create ETL jobs and get the data loaded in your big data solutions. Then you have your Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is an open source technology. Again, Elasticsearch relies on flexible data models to build a updated uh, visitor's profile to meet demanding workloads. So basically in a nutshell, Elasticsearch allows you to do data mining on top of your big data, right? And then we have Apache Storm and Apache Spark both these technologies are actually real time in memory processing of big data correct now when we have data stored on your hdfs cluster and when you deploy batch processing um, mechanisms on top of that such as map reduce what happens here is it has certain mapper and reducer phases a lot of io happens to the disk and that's why those techniques are slow so Apache came up with a new solution. This is a processing system. This is not a data storage system. It uses HDFS or Hadoop for data storage. And on top of that, Spark loads everything in its memory. We have now, we cannot go deeper into Spark, but then Spark has something called executors. Executors are nothing but Java processes running on different machines of the HDFS cluster. And there it takes those chunks on those machines in the memory, we call them as in-memory RDDs, and then process those memory, uh, process those uh, memory resident RDDs on those machines in parallel and distributed fashion, right? So if you have petabytes and zettabytes of data to be processed, it is just not possible processing it using Oracle systems, Oracle or any RDBM systems for that matter. But when you have these kind of storage mechanisms, and these kind of processing mechanisms, then that to in-memory processing mechanisms, it not only allows you to process the big data in batch manner, but also allows you to do in-memory live processing or real-time processing of that big data. So that's how powerful the big data processing and analytics systems have become nowadays. Sir, what is RDDs? RDDs is Resilient Distributed Data Sets. It's a term used in Spark. Okay, unfortunately, we cannot go in deeper into that. But RDDs is, um, uh, you can say, a virtual representation of all of the data that is sitting in HDFS. And when this Spark job starts working on it, it takes this data in the Spark executor's memory. Okay. And then this data sitting in Spark executor's memory is called RDD, Resilient Distributed Data Sets. Resilient, why? Because it is fault tolerant. If any machine fails, that can be recreated, that part can be recreated. Distributed, why? Because I told you the Spark executors are running on different machines in the cluster. So this is a distributed. It is existing on every uh, every machine's RAM. And then collectively, the logical view is RDD. Uh, and it is a data set. That's why resilient distributed data sets. Okay.
So then we have uh, Cassandra. Now, while people were solution finding solutions for big data problems using these kind of big data technologies, there were other set of engineers which are also working on something called databases, right? Now, HDFS or Spark, these are not databases. These are not data management systems. These are file systems. But some, so, some set of engineers were also working on databases, but then they didn't want all the limitations of RDBMS system, relational databases, correct? Because relational databases, they had strict schemas and those kind of things, uh, referential integrity, transactions, controls, and those kind of things, which were really uh, using which it was not possible to process big data and store the big data. And that's why they created another suite of databases. They are called NoSQL databases. NoSQL stands for not only SQL databases. That means it takes, uh, uh, it, it gets rid of all the limitations of uh, RDBMS systems and it also gives you the flexibility of databases, right? So that also came up as a solution for solving big data problem. And that solution is called NoSQL. Now, NoSQL is not a name of the product, but it is a category of products. Within NoSQL, we have different products called Cassandra, MongoDB, DynamoDB, and those kind of things. And those NoSQL databases are depend, uh, depending on the use case we are trying to use it for, they are of different uh, architectures. So some of them are column family NoSQL database, some of them are document-based NoSQL database, or OP databases, those kind of things. So Cassandra, is a storing and querying large amounts of data uh, is used for storing and querying large amounts of data with a very split second performance cassandra databases are very fast and uh, with that speed they're also allowing us to process and store big data correct and cassandra is a column family based nosql database if you if you ever get an opportunity to learn nosql databases then definitely learn Cassandra and one more NoSQL database, which is very interesting is MongoDB, right? These technologies are actually catching up the data market these days. So you should also be learning these technologies. Okay. So after learning, what is big data analytics? What are the different types? What are the different tools available in the market? Now let's get into the different phases of big data analytics, correct? Now big data analytics, no matter what kind of big data analytics, what domain of big data analytics, what tools you're using to do that analytics, you will always have these four steps in your big data analytics. Very first and important step is collecting the data. When you say big data, this data is huge volume. This data is variety of data. This might be coming from various sources. So you need to have your mechanisms, ETL tools or whatever, like talent and all, to get the data, extract this data from these various heterogeneous or homogeneous sources of data. Once you collect the data, as we already discussed, data as such doesn't have any value. It is nothing but a pile of numericals, zeros and ones and bytes and all of those things, right? So looking at that data, if my business stakeholder has to look at that data in some file, let's say a log data, it will not make a lot of sense to it. In fact, it will not make any sense to that person. So now what do we need? We need to clean this data, right? As this data is a big data, there might be veracity also in that data. Veracity means impurities. There might be some junk values in that data. There might be some extrapolated data in that. There might be some missing data, null values. All of that comes with the big data. So the if you ask any machine learning scientist or any data, a data scientist or something, uh, or data analyst for that matter, you will understand that these people spend most of their time for big, uh, that is used in big data analytics, in, in data analytics in cleaning the data. You call it as data wrangling or data cleansing. There are various other technologies or techniques used for data wrangling, but most of the time is spent in cleansing the data, getting rid of all the impurities in the data. Now, once your data is impure, uh, once your data is free of impurities, now you need to flatten it. What do you mean by flattening it? You need to convert it in some homogeneous format, right? So that is done by processing the data. You get the data from various sources, you cleanse them, and you now reformat them, you know, for um, pertaining to your domain or your business. Now, once you have that data, clean data in a particular format, now you can apply your big data analytics technology, uh, big data analytics algorithms on top of that. It might be predictive, descriptive, uh, diagnostic, or whatever algorithms we have discussed. 
whatever language you want to use, whatever tools you want to use, and then generate fancy reports, charts out of that. So the data comes as you can say raw data, which makes no sense to anybody. And then when it leaves your big data analytics pipeline at the out output side, it is wonderful information. And that information is not uh, just in the form of reports, but it also is in the form of visualization. So most of the data scientists, if you see, they are good storytellers, right? They should be able to look at something which makes no sense to anything, anybody, analyze it and represent it to the stakeholders, to the business in such a wonderful way that they understand everything from it. Correct? And that's what the real essence of big data analytics is. So these are the different phases that are involved in the big data analytics. Veracity is, in, is impurities. Yes, veracity is in impurities. Okay. So now, after talking about big data, big data analytics, what are the different ways? What are the different types? What are the different tools? What are the different phases in big data analytics? Now let's have a look at the different applications that we have. When I say applications, I mean the use cases in different domains that we use it. Now, the ones which I have listed here are very important ones, but these are not the only ones. The big data has matured a lot. Big data technology world has matured a lot. And almost all the different domains nowadays are using it. As I said, without even our knowledge, if you are using smartphones at various instances, you are using big data and big data analytics. You are using uh, the results of big data analytics on Sony phones, right? The businesses, they use it in a very big manner. So the businesses like banking, manufacturing, life sciences, government agencies, retail, healthcare, telecom, automobile, education sector, especially after the pandemic, is using big data and big data analytics results in a very big way. So let's understand how these businesses, how these domains are using big data. First, we will take banking. Banks and financial services firms uh, use analytics to differentiate fraudulent interactions from le legitimate business transactions. Okay, so uh, you know any uh, financial frauds or transaction frauds, anything they identify them using these techniques. The analytic systems suggest immediate actions such as blocking irregular transactions, which stops fraud before it occurs and improves profitability. Let's take an example of a credit card fraud. Your credit card gets stolen one day, right? And uh, you don't even know that, right? If you know that, you can call the bank and stop it. But they, before you even realizing that your card is stolen, if the uh, the thief goes and does a very big transaction on that card before he just uh, disposes it off, he does a very huge transaction on that card. But when that transaction is logged into the system, it gets checked against your transaction history. Correct. And if you are a person who is not doing these kind of transactions on your card, then that flags out as an outlier, right? As soon as the system identifies an outlier in your transaction, it makes a call to you, correct? Authorizing, asking you to authorize that transaction. Obviously, because you lost the card, you getting a call from the bank, you will definitely deny that transaction right? That not only allows you to save your money by not allowing the transaction to go ahead, but also banks prohibits that kind of a fraud. It blocks the card immediately and potentially it might even locate the thief and catch it. Okay? So those kind of things are actually a result of this big data analytics. Next is your manufacturing. Manufacturing domain, big data analytics helps us to uh, uh, get a good insight of raw materials, working conditions used for manufacturing sectors, thereby avoiding wastages of materials. Okay. Then we have life sciences. Big data analytics is very effectively used in storage of sharing uh, genome data, especially in the pandemic season. You must be aware that we, ha we had this uh, vaccination and those kind of things going on, right? So... Uh, when you work on certain, certain vaccination for a virus, you have to actually decode the genome of that virus and that genome sequences are huge data. We have to share it. There were scientists, there were laboratories across the world working on that particular vaccine. So they had to share a lot of data. All of that is not possible without big data technologies and big data analytics. Then government agencies in India especially, the Indian government used big data analytics to get the estimates of the trade in the country. 
yeah, they used central taxes or you know GST tax invoices to analyze the extent to which the states are trading with each other, so that they will give so uh, they will uh, create some corridors between the states and other countries, which facilitates better business between these, um, you know. Uh, generating profitability for the country and also if you are aware of Aadhaar initiatives those are all nothing but results of big data and big data analytics. Retail industry including e-commerce and e-stores are widely using big data analytics to optimize their business for example Amazon then we have Walmart we have Flipkart and those kind of things right. Now uh, if you are buying a phone let's say on Amazon and after buying a phone you browse through certain um, uh, mobile accessories like headphone or maybe mobile cover and stuff like that you did not buy anything on that day but you spent some more time on some items you looked at the prices you then compared it with something else right you added some of them in the card you did not spend any time on some of them you did not like some of them uh, upfront all of that is actually a click stream data that you generate right and that is captured by amazon they analyze that data and when on the same day, when you are, you know, browsing through other pages or you are on your social networking page, you will start seeing the recommendations for those items. Maybe sometimes you get discounts also on those items. So what Amazon is trying to do here is they're trying to hack your mind and trying to, you know, convince you of buying those items by displaying those items because you were watching for those, you were looking for those items sometime back and you did not buy it for some reason. So they might as well just display, flash those items in front of you again and again, maybe with some discounts. And then that might get you into buying those items from Amazon, right? And this they are doing with billions and trillions of customers across the globe. You can imagine the profitability that they're creating, that they're creating for themselves, right? So that is nothing but the application of big data analytics here working for them, right? Now, then we have healthcare, we have already seen telecom. They are one of the most significant contributors to the big data. Telecom industry improves the quality of services and uh, routes traffic more effectively by analyzing call data records in real time. These companies can identify fraudulent behavior, also customer churn, they can avoid the customer churn, customer leaving their services and joining somebody else. The making, the marketing decisions can modify its campaigns to better target its customers and use insights gain to develop new products and services. So all of this is nothing but application of big data analytics. Automobile industry, we have already spoken about the smart cars, so they are, they are not quite um, norm yet in India, but across the globe, there are many um, you know, self-driven cars and those kind of things. Like we have Rolls Royce, which has embraced the big data by fitting hundreds of sensors on its engines, right? So Rolls-Royce is a, is a big brand of car, right? It is an elite brand. So they have these sensors on their engines and various parts of the car. And then they sense the data and continuously send data to the, uh, to the um, uh, Rolls-Royce uh, plants. And before the customer even realizes that there is some problem in any part of the Rolls-Royce car, they actually they are tracked by the engineers and then they provide a solution giving the elite customer satisfaction customer experience to their customers then we have the um, uh, education industry as i said education has changed completely since the covid and pandemic most of us are working from home most of our children are learning from home right i mean now it is coming back to normalcy but then the impact of those two and a half years has really stayed back with us right children are still using uh, various big data analytics related or enabled uh, technologies uh, or or tools so in this one is a field where big data analytics is being absorbed slowly and gradually but it has made its place now after the pandemic opting for big data powered technology as a learning tool now there are various learning tools which are made uh, which these uh, children are made to install in their uh, um, ipads or tablets or mobiles or whatever they have instead of traditional lecture methods right and they have realized that being part of this experience online education is so flexible right if used correctly it can be so so much more fruitful than the traditional ways of attending the class in physical um physical condition or or attending the class physically 
though there are certain benefits of attending the class physically, but then it has actually made every one of us aware of the benefits of these kind of um, uh, smart tools for education, right? So it has definitely uh, added to the enhanced uh, learning experience for the students as well as their parents and the teachers, right? So this is nothing but the applications. So with that, I come to the end of this session. Uh, thank you very much everyone for attending the session and being such a wonderful audience. Thank you so much everyone. Have a wonderful day ahead.